Hey, what's up guys? My name's Jared. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Land Cruiser uh, and then a little bit about the uh, the Honda. So uh, if you saw my last video, uh, you would have seen that on the other uh, quarter panel of the Land Cruiser, I already welded in uh, this replacement piece. So I've done that on the other side. Uh, I still need to do this side, I'm gonna work on that today. I won't uh, put a video up of this because it's just the same thing that I already did on the other side. Um, but then after that, the next project on the Land Cruiser is either going to be this uh, tail section um, or I'm gonna start on the uh, rocker panels. Now the tail section, uh, there's this structural support that goes all the way along um, the inside of the body. You can kind of see, so you can see over here um, where I've already welded this section in. Um, this support is, you know, it's in bad shape, it's rusted out, but it's really expensive um, to buy this piece. This piece alone is about 400 bucks, um, and with shipping and stuff, it could be a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna pull this one off uh, and see if I can patch it and repair it and use it. Obviously it's also, uh, it's bent over here. This whole section is bent. So um, when I do the, the tail section, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this out, see if I can repair it, and if not, then I'll replace it. Um, and then once that's replaced, then I have this piece, uh, which goes over it back here. Uh, so that's the only part you really see um, when it's all done but that, that piece underneath is kind of the most important part. Um, but okay, so that's the bodywork that's going on on the Land Cruiser. Um, other quick news, so the, uh, the Nissan, the engine has been picked up. It's on its way here. The shipping company um, emailed me yesterday saying it's gonna be delayed by a few days, but hopefully I'm gonna have that by sometime next week, I would think. Uh, and I've already put in an order for a bunch of other parts. So I have all the brake parts that I need coming, um, all new gaskets for the engine, a carburetor rebuild kit, I've got all that stuff coming. So that one, I'm gonna start making progress on the Nissan very soon. Um, also, Nissan related, these are the wheels that I'm gonna use on it. So these are actually uh, Land Cruiser wheels. So. My Land Cruiser came stock with these steel wheels, and so I plan on using these on the actual Land Cruiser. But um, I also like this style of wheel, uh, and I, I found what seemed like a good deal on a full set of five of these that are already powder coated. So I went ahead and bought those, and for now I'm going to put them on the Nissan, but then I could always switch them out to the Land Cruiser if I decide that I'd rather have these on the Land Cruiser. The only thing is the tires for the Nissan are a little bit smaller than when I'm running on the, the FJ. But um, I've got new tires here. So these are 3950s and the tires on the Land Cruiser um, are 31 1050s that I'm running. So if I switch the wheels, I'd have to switch the tires. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, I did order a set of five of these wheels on eBay, only four showed up, and one of them was pretty badly damaged, so I'm going to be shipping it back, and then hopefully the seller is going to ship me two non-damaged wheels uh, and package them better this time, but we'll see how that goes. Um, the other kind of news or update um, for the Land Cruiser regarding the engine, um, so I asked you guys in my last update video, um, you know, what 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 you think I should do. Should I rebuild this engine or should I get a 2F engine with a four speed transmission? And I've been leaning towards uh, that option, the 2F and the four speed. Uh, and I would say your response was probably about split, maybe 60, 40, maybe 60% saying I should do the 2F. Um, so the slight majority saying the 2F with the four speed would be better. Um, and that is the way that I've been leaning. But I am starting to think um, that I, I might just keep this engine and rebuild it. So I don't know if I was clear last time when I was talking about a numbers matching engine versus a non-numbers matching. My uh, point was if I replaced this with a rebuilt non-numbers matching engine, 
which would be the easiest thing to do and, and maybe the cheapest, I'm not sure yet. Um, how does that affect the value versus the 2F? But this is in fact a numbers matching engine. So when you check the, the numbers for this engine um, on like Spectre Off-Road's website, this um, engine was built the same month and the same year as the truck. So I'm, I'm positive it's the original engine. Uh, I have called to get quotes from two different companies to have the block board out. Uh, and it sounds like they can provide the pistons as well, which maybe will be a little bit cheaper than what I was looking at. But I'm going to find out what it would cost to just rebuild this one. Uh, and I may end up sticking with it. Um, the four-speed transmission, I've since learned, because you guys have, have commented in my last videos, that the four-speed transmission and the three-speed have the same gear ratio for their high gear. So the top gear, third gear or fourth gear is the same. So your highway speeds are the same, which I'm not really concerned about that anyways. Um, but I, I don't know, I, 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 don't, I don't know that it's gonna be worth changing the whole engine to get the four speed, because the four speed is all I really care about. I don't really care about the 2F engine. This is already gonna have fuel injection on it. Um, it should already run very similar um, to the 2F engine and it's correct for the truck. I like all of that. Uh, it sounds like there may be a way that I could put the four speed on here with maybe a different bell housing and flywheel uh, if I end up wanting to go that route. Um, but I'm kind of now leaning towards rebuilding this, keeping it stock just like I was going to with the three speed transmission, driving it and then seeing what I like and what I don't like. Um, Cause you know, like I've said before, I may be coming back to this and adding power steering and, and disc brakes and you know, swapping the transmission out. I may do all those things um, but first, I'd like to see what it's actually like to drive as it is, uh, the way that it was built originally. So, uh, that's it for the Land Cruiser. Um, if Hopefully, I'm going to get bids today or, or early next week to have it rebuilt, and then maybe in the next few weeks, um, I can get it over there and have them hone it out and get started on that. But we've still got so much um, work to do on the body and everything else that, you know, if it takes a few months to have that thing done, that's not that big of a deal. So, that's the Land Cruiser. Um, on to the Honda. The last video I did on the Honda, I pulled the transmission out. Um, I discovered why it wasn't going into reverse, and it was because there was all kinds of crap inside this section of the transmission. Now this section is sealed, and then this section is sealed, and then everything here is sealed. I think there's a sealed section here and here. But anyways, the only area that really had some issues was inside here. There's a bunch of crap in there, and the little um, mechanism that has a spring and a push rod on it to keep it from going into reverse when you go to put it in first, uh, that was all jammed up and, and wouldn't budge, so that's why I couldn't get to go in reverse. So I fixed that, I cleaned this up, uh, cleaned up the mount and the drive shaft, so that's all good to go. Um, on this car, I'm really just waiting on parts. I put in my last order for parts about two weeks ago, uh, so hopefully they're going to show up really soon. Um, but what I'm waiting on is not only gaskets for the transmission, I want to replace some of the main seals before I put it back in. Uh, also, these rubber ends that go on the drive shaft, I want to replace those before I put that in. Um, but main thing is this throw-out bearing. So this bearing, um, when I first pulled the engine, was completely stuck. It wouldn't, it wouldn't turn at all. I cleaned it up. Um, I used some penetrating oil and some brake cleaner, and I got it to spin, and I've greased it, and it would probably be okay. Um, but I went ahead and ordered a new one so I don't have to worry about it. So before I can put this on the engine, I gotta replace this. And also there's probably gonna be some seals in here that I'm gonna replace. I basically ordered every transmission seal that they had. So when it gets here, I'll find out what seals I actually have and what seals I don't. So I'm not gonna take anything apart that I don't have a new gasket for to put it back together. But I'm assuming I'll have gaskets. This, I believe, is the um, oil pump for the transmission, which is crazy. I've never seen an oil pump on a transmission. But I'm sure there's going to be seals for this. Um, and there's the main seal that I'm wanting to replace is this one back here, um, because that's going to most likely leak for sure, this rubber seal right here. Um, I always replace those on any transmission when I have them out. Um, and there was a lot of oil in this general area uh, when I pulled it. So it's probably already leaking. There may have also been some leaks around here. But anyways, I've got this cleaned up. Um, once I get the parts, I can uh, put it together and put it back in the car. And then I'm also waiting on those little seals for the, uh, the brake cylinders so that I can put those back on. But the brake 
hoses, um, I was able to order the front hoses, but they didn't have any for the rear. And they won't for another month or so. So that's probably going to be the final thing keeping me from driving this. Um, and so at that point, I'll have to decide whether I want to order a kit and build my own brake lines for the rear or wait longer to get the, um, the factory ones. But aside from, you know, putting this back together and putting it in the car, pretty much the only thing left to do to make it drivable is the fuel system. I got to pull the fuel tank out, which is in here, clean it out, blow out the fuel lines, get all that ready to go. And then really all the big stuff is done and I'll be able to start it and do the first drive. And once I drive it, I'll, I'll probably discover other things are wrong. You know, there could be things wrong with the front end, the tie rod ends, things like that. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be able to do kind of a shakedown drive and find out what else um, needs to be addressed before it can really be enjoyed. But it's getting really close. Um, it's just parts are really slow this time around. The last uh, order of parts that I got came in less than a week. Um, this one, it's, it's coming on two weeks now uh, and, and no sign of them. So hopefully they show up soon. Um, but that's pretty much it for the Honda, uh, which I think is pretty much it uh, for this update video. So, um, you know, again, thank you guys for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, please like and share the videos. Uh, I'm trying to get the channel to grow and uh, you guys are helping me with that. So I really appreciate it. Uh, and so until next time, I'll see you later, guys. Bye.